Hey guys, and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again, and today it's all about how to attract pollinators to your property. Pollinators come in all shapes and sizes. They can range from hummingbirds to beautiful butterflies, maybe some not so friendly wasps and honeybees. One of the first and most obvious things people think of when wanting to attract pollinators to their garden is flowers. All pollinators are drawn to flowers because of pollen, nectar, the bright colors. It provides a vital source of food for them to survive. So when you're thinking about planting flowers to attract pollinators to your property, you may want to think about what's going to flower in the spring, summer, and fall. That way the pollinators in your area have a year-round reason to come back and visit your property over someone else's. Pollinators are a huge part of our gardens. Without them, we couldn't grow food. Without pollinators in the world, the world would quickly die. So pollinators are a huge part in feeding your family, feeding my family, feeding the world. So we want to encourage them to come to our gardens. And while it's so refreshing and rewarding to start a garden, some of the most frustrating parts are sharing the fruits of your labor quite literally with insects. With that being said, a lot of gardeners are tempted to use chemical insecticides. While they're effective at keeping bugs off your fruit and vegetables, they also keep away pollinators that are going to help create those fruits and vegetables. So a good alternative might be to use neem oil. While it will ward away all bugs, it won't kill them completely. Another really clever way to keep some of those bad bugs at bay is to invite other bugs that prey upon the bad bugs such as ladybugs, praying mantis, spiders, things like that, that will take care of some of the more pesty pests in your garden. I only wish you guys had smell-o-vision. You might notice behind me, that's all clover. We haven't mowed our lawn in about two weeks, and in a way it's on, pur on purpose, and in a way it's just we've been busy but the smell that the clover is giving off is something you don't really get to experience a lot. And it's because clover's kind of looked at as a weed, but for pollinators, it is just a wealth of nectar, a wealth of food and attractant to your garden. And for that reason, you might not want to cut it down so quickly. You might not want to consider it a weed and get rid of it. I love a clean cut lawn as much as the next person, but sometimes you can always designate an area where you don't quite cut everything down, such as the clover we talked about earlier. This gives your pollinators a little bit more of an attractant, feeds them a little bit, and gets them to come back. One of the more well-known pollinators outside of butterflies and hummingbirds are bees. You can see behind me, that's my buckeye hive. I keep my own honeybees because it helps to pollinate all of my garden, including my fruits, vegetables, and flowers. It makes them healthier, happier, makes me healthier and happier because I grow my own food that way. And it keeps the environment healthy and happy because bees go a long way when it comes to pollinating. Not only will you have a happy harvest, but most likely most of your neighbors will too. Another really handy way to keep pollinators in your area is to make sure that you have a water source. This behind me is considered a bee feeder, which sometimes when starting new hives will fill with a sugar water dilution that we make into a syrup. But if you're just trying to water your bees, you can fill this with water too. You can find this on Amazon, sometime in local co-ops, or your local beekeepers might have extras of these. But you don't have to have a bee feeder in order to supply them with nice, clean water. You can see behind me, I've got a bird bath set up with some rocks that lead down into the water so that pollinators can stop and get a drink without getting caught in the water. This can also be achieved with a shallow bowl with water filled with marbles or gravel or rocks. If you're hoping to attract hummingbirds as your pollinators, you can put up a couple of feeders placed all around your garden so that your hummingbirds are encouraged to visit every corner of your garden and the flowers in between. But be careful of marketed feeds that have red dye in it. It's not good for your hummingbirds. So the clear feed will do just fine, or you can go ahead and mix sugar and water together, and that will do too. 
And though we might not like to admit that carpenter bees and wood boring bees aren't pollinators, they actually are, and they're pretty harmless. So if you have any old stumps or wood laying around that's nice and dry, leave them for the wood borers so that they have some place to do their work and make their homes away from our dried lumber. You might also notice that each pollinator prefers different plants from the other. Make sure to try to plant a variety. When planting other flowers for your pollinators, think about your indigenous flowering plants. The reason for that being is a lot of your pollinators in your local area already know and are familiar with these plants and probably prefer them over ornamentals or invasive species, such as milkweed, feverfew, chamomile, the list goes on and on and on. So do a little research, plant these beautiful indigenous plants, and watch the pollinators flock to your garden. If you might be unfamiliar with the indigenous plants that flower in your area, you can always get with your local agricultural extension along with the Department of Natural Resources in your area and they should be able to give you a long list of flowering indigenous plants. They might even be able to let you know when they're having plant sales or nurseries that they might recommend for you to buy those plants from. These are just a few things that I found helpful in encouraging pollinators to come to my garden to help my garden grow stronger and healthier, and I get to reap what they sow with all of their hard work, as does everybody else on the planet. So remember to be kind to your pollinators and attract them whenever you can. I think that's going to do it for us here on Mulberry Branch Farm. There's some of my tips and tricks to pull pollinators into your garden, no matter what shape or form that they come in. Just remember guys, be kind out there. Be good to your pollinators, stay healthy, and until next time, we'll see you here on the next one. Bye.